What's hiding underneath things can be scary. Underwater, under your bed, especially what's under your carpet. Except when you get new carpet from Carpet One Floor and Home. After tearing up your old carpet, they'll vacuum and apply Healthinex antimicrobial to your subfloor, disinfecting and killing mold, mildew, and any remaining general awfulness. Carpet One Floor and Home goes the extra mile to protect you, your family, and your home. Carpet One Floor and Home in Columbia, making your home beautiful, guaranteed. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Tuesday, August the 13th. We're going to talk about stormwater management today and bring up some points that maybe we just don't think about on a regular basis. I'm going to introduce you to Ginny and Kate Trout. Good to have both of you here. Great, and, thank you. And, and you, both of you are extremely interested in stormwater management. Yes. When we see stormwater uh, going down the sewer in the city streets. Mm-hmm. That's going right to, right the, to the streams. Right into the streams, mm-hmm. which then empty into the river, which then empties into the Gulf of Mexico, which then mixes with our world's oceans. Correct. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to get across the message today is be careful with what you put down that uh stormwater drainage right right and we're also we're also trying to have a device that will take us back to kind of how the stormwater was before we developed and so when we have a parking lot all that water concentrates and then it it runs off it can pick up pollutants it can cause erosion and so what we're trying to do is to say hey let's keep it on the site let's spread it out let's have it infiltrate so that's what it was before we got there before we got and we changed the site so how do you how do you have water infiltrate in the parking lot? Well, you don't. It, it's going to connect to a corner, and then we're going to take it, and then we're going to put it into our device. We have a stormwater management device, and that device is going to be able to spread out the water over, back over the site. So once below it ground. concentrates, it's below ground, yeah. right? Below mm-hmm. ground, and mm-hmm. once it goes below ground, then the earth has a natural filtration system, correct? Okay. Yes, yeah. And you're also not allowing that water to grab things such as excess fertilizer or pesticides and pull them into the water. So you're you're kind of working at two different fronts. So you're getting the water back to the ground where it naturally filter, filters, and you're also not allowing that water to pick up a lot of speed and take different kinds of things that are on the surface out and into your streams, into your rivers, and eventually to the ocean. Yeah. We were talking about washing cars when people mm. wash cars in the street in the summertime and you, you almost everybody does that you don't think about it mm. but all the the detergent and runoff is actually going right into the streams and rivers when it goes into that stormwater runoff right right mm-hmm. yeah so it's not it's not treated so we do need to think about how much uh, you know, how much we're using these other materials and what's going to be going into the streams. Mm -hmm. And just realizing that you're not your own little island, that everything is connected and water doesn't care where your property ends and where the next person starts. So just being aware that water grabs things, water takes pollutants, water, you know, takes your soap down into the streams and that we need to think about how we're going to manage that water so we can limit the impact on the environment. So how can we manage it efficiently? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the that's big a, question. Yeah, so it's it's a very complicated question, and there's a lot of different pieces to it. You know, there's so if you ever see a pond in a neighborhood and you wonder why is there a pond in a neighborhood, that's um, someone trying to manage the stormwater for that site. Sometimes you see things such as um, different kind of filtration systems, mm-hmm. and then we're trying to come up, like you mentioned earlier, earlier with a method that tries to mimic the natural processes that occurred before okay. we developed on that site. Website that people can go to for more information? Yes, in, infiltronicsenvironmental.com, I-N-F-I-L-T-R-O-N-I-C-S, environmental.com. Um, and that'll give you all the information. All the information, Absolutely. links to social media. And, and, and give careful thought to what you... Uh, run down those storm drains. Definitely. Thank you, ladies, for coming by. Thank you very much much for having us. Now, I want to introduce you to uh, Beth Snyder from the Art House in Fulton. Good to have you here, Beth. Thanks. Good to be here. Tell us about the Art House. So the Art House is um, a not-for-profit art gallery. It's based in Fulton, right on Court Street in the middle of the Brick District, which is beautiful, historic buildings. For people who aren't familiar when you say the Brick District, Uh explain that. So we have a, a 
little area of several blocks put together that have the actual historic bricks from, I don't know, the 1800s or something. On the streets. On the streets, yeah. So it's just a really charming little area. All the buildings have a lot of really cool architecture. And slowly but surely, we're buying buildings and fixing them up. You know, um, we have a new company that's there now. It's a gourmet popcorn company, and they just bought a huge building and are fixing it up. And I fix up the building that my business is in, and um, it's beautiful. It's just a great place to take a little stroll, shop, eat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the art house, you have what? So the art house is a members-based gallery. So we have um, a bunch of members who are artists from all over the local area, and they do all kinds of stuff from oil paintings to sculpture. We have ceramics and jewelry, um, cards. And you get juried in to be uh, a member of the art house, and then we have shows about once a quarter. Um, and it, and then we also do lots of classes and lots of outreach in the community. So it's for a tiny town like ours, it's a really great thing to have because yeah. there's a, you know, on a cultural level, we have art openings. You know, it's it's a place for the community to come and do something that's a little bit different. You're kind of like the, uh, the version of the Columbia Art League in Correct. Columbia. Exactly. Now, yeah. to, to have uh, to have your work displayed at the art house, do you have to? live in Fulton? Oh, no, not in Fulton. Um, we have artists from all over mid-Missouri, and I think maybe even in St. Louis. Um, I, don't, I don't think that there is a geographical, you know, requirement at all. I think... Um, so you could have some of your artwork, Columbia Art League, you could decide to put oh, some sure. of it yeah, at, we have at lots the of art house? Yes, we have lots of artists that do both. Both well, that's things. nice. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. And, the, and the location of the, of the art house is where? It's at 531 Court Street. So it's on the same block as um, several of our really great restaurants, Beck's. Uh, there's Brooklyn Pizza, which is awesome. Um, it's it's right downtown, right close to the courthouse. You're kind of like a, a walking billboard for Fulton. <laughs> well, I do love it there. It's yes, a great. Fulton is a, a very, very town. nice. It's a very nice community. And I can get you can get there very fast from Columbia. I did it in 32 minutes today. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not speeding, right? Oh, sure. Not mm -mm. speeding. But nope. well, what are some of the other reasons why people should come visit uh, your town? Well, we have a lot of great little places to visit that, that are in the Brick District. There's um, some little treasure trove antique stores. There's a couple of gift shops. There's really some wonderful food and restaurants that um, are worth a trip, you know. And it's only 30 minutes from Fulton, from Columbia, like a probably 30 minutes from downtown. Um, there's Beck's, which is American cuisine that they cook from scratch and is amazing. There's Brooklyn Pizza that um, the owners are actually from Brooklyn. So it's a great little afternoon or evening excursion to go have dinner, take a walk, shop in a couple of our shops, um, and just see what's going on. It's right. just something a little and different. It's, and, and be sure you stop into the art house. Now, when are you open at the art house? The art house is open uh, Wednesday through Saturday like 10 to 6, I think. Um, and we have classes all the time that you can find on our website, which is arthousefultonmo.org. Uh, and we're also really active on Facebook. So okay. check us out. All right. And your particular business is what? Is One Canoe Two Papery, which is a stationery and gift company. Yeah. And our, our old friend Janelle Delman works there. Works yeah. there. Tell Janelle we said hi. I will. She's, She's an all-star. Yeah, she is. She looks as lovely as ever. Of course. All right. <laughs> we're out of time for today. Beth Snyder, thank you so much for coming thank by. Thank you. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about new voting equipment and charity axe-throwing tournament for the Cancer Society. See you then. Bye-bye.